I got these two um, documents. I'm sure that they're probably, I've seen both of them a hundred times already. This probably, one. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Let me bring this up. This is main stuff that I have to review, so. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Do you want to start on this page or the next one? Um, This page is fine. Okay, I'm going to find a better copy of that. And I don't have it. I think it is this one right here. Is that it? Same page? Yes, it's the bottom half of that. <laughs> You've done the top half already? Yeah, that was pretty easy to me. It's just the equations, for whatever reason, I always set them up wrong and then I get frustrated and oh. <laughs> Well, that, certainly you got what the name of the game is, and that is setting the equations up right. So, start with 40. What's the sum of the angles of that octagon? Um. What's, so, the, what's the general formula for the sum of the interior angles of any polygon? N minus 2 times 180. That's the most important formula that you need to memorize. Don't forget that one. Okay? Okay. So, how many sides does this have? It has 8. So. Okay. So... 8 minus 2, 6 times 180 is the sum of the interior angles. Okay. What's each yeah. angle going to be? How many angles One, do you have? Uh, you have 8, so it would be 135 degrees for each one. So in other words, the formula for a regular polygon is actually n minus 2 times 180, and each angle you divide by n. So okay. that's not a bad one to memorize either. But notice this is only true for regular polygons, where they're equiangular. In other words, every angle has to be the same for me to be able to use this formula down here. But that's what okay. you did. You did n minus 2 times 180, and you divide it by n, the number of sides, 8. And the number of sides is the same as the number of angles. So what's the equation, the final equation that's going to allow me to solve for x is what? Um, 4x minus 21 equals 135? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. we know. We know that angle to be 135 degrees, so whatever that expression is, is equal to 135. Forty-one, what kind of shape is that? Uh, a kite. Okay. What do we know about a kite? If I label mm -hmm. these angles... What are the relationships between 1, 2, 3, and 4? Are there any equal angles? Uh, 2 and 4, and that's it. Okay. So, on this picture, what is this angle right here? Mm. In terms of X. Um. It'd be x squared because oh, no. it's the same angle as that, right? Yeah. You just said 2 was the same as 4. So yeah. That angle's the same as that, so that angle must be 4x minus 9. Okay. Okay. And now that I know that that's 4x minus 9, give me the equation. What do the four angles have to total? Uh, 360. Okay, so just give me the equation. I'll, we'll presume you can solve these equations. Okay, so 5x 
plus 11 plus 2x minus 8 plus 4x minus 9 squared. Not squared, mm. just done twice. Okay. Right? In other words, if I was going to put a label on that, it would just be 4x minus 9. And now I'm summing up all four angles and letting them equal 360. Okay. And because I only have one variable, then I can solve that. In other words, there's only one variable, a bunch of x's and a bunch of numbers. Mm -hmm. You know how to proceed with solving that, right? Yes. <laughs> And 42 is probably the toughest problem on this bottom sheet. In fact, let me blow it up a little bit. Given what you've been studying lately, what are we most likely looking at here? Um, two similar triangles. Very good. Okay. Now, the question is, is how do we know they're similar? That side's equal to that side, and this side's 15. This side is equal to this side. And this side's 14. What is AC called? It has a name. Um, the mid-segment. Yeah, and what's the relationship between the mid-segment and the base of that triangle ED? Um, this, is, this. this is called the mid-segment because it bisects both sides that it's connecting, right? Okay. And because it does that, it has to be parallel with that. Okay? Okay. Now, can we prove similarity? One way, to, one way to look at similarity is to separate it out. I'm going to separate it into okay. two triangles. This is A, B, C. And this is D, E, B. Okay. What's this measurement right here? Uh, 15. It's this measurement from B to C. 14. So this triangle, that's 15. That's 14. What's EB? Mm. So 30. What's DB? 28. This base is 4X minus 8. What is, the similar, okay. what is the similarity ratio, or the linear ratio, whatever you want to call it, between these two triangles? Um, two, so each one is half. Two to one or one to two, depending on whether you're talking big to little or little to big, right? Yeah. So... Every corresponding side over here has to be twice. In other words, 30 is twice 15, 28 is twice 14. What's AC equal to? Um, 2x minus 4. Good. Now, they give us the perimeter of this triangle. They tell me okay. the perimeter of that triangle is 39. So what equation can I write that lets me solve for x? Um, 2x minus 4 equals 43. No. Right when you're putting an equation, try to do it in the way you think about the problem. What does perimeter mean? 
Um, the total sum of the three sides, right? Yeah. Okay. So give me an equation that's the sum of the three sides. Mm. Start with 2x minus 4 and add the other okay. two sides to it. Plus 15 plus 28. No, plus 14. Oh, plus 14. There's one sorry. side. There's another side. There's the third side. Those have to equal what? Uh, 39. There you go. There's the equation. Okay. And when you finish with your equation, make sure you can solve. In other words, I know when you take a test, you'll actually have to solve these. We're just skipping that step because we're both pretty comfortable that you know how to do that. Um, yeah. But getting the equation out there is the toughest part on all of these problems. So I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, well, I guess there's nothing else for me to say. But if they give you the perimeter, know what the perimeter is. The perimeter is the sum of the three sides. Or if it's a five-sided figure, it's the sum of the five sides. Okay, well, so you have to write an equation that add the three sides together, let it equal to the perimeter, and you're on your way. Okay. All right. 43, what kind of figure is that? That is a, a rhombus? No. no. I mean, no. What's a rhombus? Tell me what the first thing about a rhombus is. Um, it has four sets of... Four equal sides. That's all you yeah. need to know. Okay? Okay. It turns out that you can't draw four equal sides and put them together without it being a parallelogram. So okay. a rhombus is also a parallelogram. But the most important thing about a rhombus isn't that it's a parallelogram, but that it has four equal sides. In other words, that's equal to that's equal to that's equal to that. Well, we can tell that that's not true here. These two sides yeah. are clearly longer than this side, plus there's no markings that indicate they're equal. So it's not a rhombus, but it is a parallelogram. Remember what a definition of a parallelogram is? Two sets of opposite parallel lines. In other words, this has to be parallel to that, that has to be parallel to that. That's what makes it a parallelogram. Now, what's the relationship between this angle and this angle? Um, they're linear, is that? Oh, what if I just drew two parallel lines and had a transversal? What's the relationship between angle one and angle two? Oh, um, they're, oh my god, I don't remember. <laughs> they're supplementary. Okay. That's in other words, if I finish creating my parallelogram, there's the rest of the parallelogram. But on any parallelogram, adjacent angles are supplementary. So what, okay. what's the equation I can write? Um, would be 5x plus 20. Would it be plus 3x? What is, yes, what does supplementary mean? Um, that they're opposite? They, add, they mm -hmm. add to what? 180. That's what it means. Okay. So if you start from that spot, if you start by knowing that two adjacent angles are supplementary, and supplementary means they add to 180, so I got to add the two angles. 5x plus 20 is one angle. I'm going to add the other angle to it. That has to equal 180. And again, it's it's easy to solve. Okay. Now, the other thing about parallelograms is opposite angles are equal. Notice that that's an obtuse angle. This is an obtuse angle. Mm -hmm. It must be equal. 
This is an acute angle. That's an acute angle. Those two angles are equal. But the adjacent angles are always supplementary, no matter whether you're talking this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one. Any two angles that are adjacent in a parallelogram add to 180. Forty-four. They want the perimeter. But it's all they're giving us is sides that are that have an X in them. Yeah. I know the perimeter is what? 4X minus 11 plus 2X plus 9 plus 8 plus X, right? Mm-hmm. But that doesn't give me the perimeter. That just gives me a bunch of X's. Yeah. So I got to take a different approach here. What can I do with this figure? Um, you could. Um, Based on this information only, what would you do next? I'm not really sure. <laughs> Figure out the third angle. In other words, okay. that's not a bad way to approach all geometry problems. Is if they left something out and start, in other words, put it in. Okay. Why did they leave out this angle when we can um, figure it out very easily? Well, that's kind of a clue. The, the first step is to figure out what that angle is because they didn't put it in there. Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, it's to equal 180, so that would be 75 plus 30. Uh, 105. Okay, you added 30 to 75, and you got 105. I feel like that's not right. <laughs> the total of the three angles has to be 180. Yeah. So if I call that Z, then it's got to be Z plus 105 equals 180. Right? Yeah. So what's Z? Um, that would be 75. <laughs> ah. That's an important number because it's the same as this one over here. What kind of triangle are we looking at? Um, would that be an isosceles? Yeah. An isosceles triangle you generally think of as having two equal sides, but it also has opposite base angles are equal. So if you start with equal base angles, then you can then say the two sides have to be equal. In other words, it's a theorem that if it has two sides equal, then the two base angles are equal. But the corollary to that theorem is if you have two base <laughs> angles that are equal, the two opposite sides are also equal. Okay. okay. Well, this side is 4x minus 11. This side is 2x plus 9. So what equation can I write to solve for x? Um, hmm. Oscillus <coughs> triangle. Yeah. This side is equal to that side. Mm hmm So write me an equation that says exactly what I just said. So, 4x minus 11 equals 2x plus 9. Perfect. Now solve that. Okay. In other words, so, once we got an equation with one variable, we know we can solve it. I couldn't solve for perimeter because it's all I could do is add up these three things, and that's equal to perimeter, but it's not equal to a number. But if I can solve for x then I'll know what the perimeter is. 
Okay. Well, the fact that I can equate that to that lets me solve the graph. <laughs> Because I have an equation now that has one variable only. So what's the next step here? Um, so subtract 2x from 4x. Okay, so what's the next line? So you get 2x and then subtract a, or add 11 to 9, so that will be 20. Okay. So and then divide 2 and x equals 10. Okay, and now that you know x equals 10, I know the perimeter is the sum of the three sides, right? Yeah. Okay, well, if I add those three sides up, I get 7x plus 6. That's the perimeter. Well, x is 10. So 7 times 10 plus 6, <coughs> 76 is the perimeter. Okay. See how I did it? You know how I got 7x plus 6, right? Can you go over that part? Yeah. So you... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm adding these three sides together without knowing what x is. So okay. I'm going to add 4x minus 11 plus 2x plus 9 plus 8 plus x. That's my perimeter. Okay. Okay. And when I simplify that, I add all the x's together. I got 7 of them. All my numbers, minus 11 plus 9 plus 8, that's plus 6. So that's what that simplifies to. And that's my perimeter. Well, I know what x is. x is 10. Mm -hmm. So I just substitute 10 for x, and I get 76 for a perimeter. Okay. All right. So, we need a different page. Um, you sent me two or three? You sent me three, didn't you? Um, I should have only sent two. I sent three oh. yesterday. Okay. I still have those um, from yesterday. Let's see. We just did that one. What's on this page here? You need to do these? Uh, the top part, yeah. Um, let me see if I can find a clear one of these. Which one is this one? Um, the top part. Um, not that. Not that. Not that. Mm -hmm. Not that. You need to do this page at all? Would this be useful to do? Is this a page you've done? Um, you know what? Yeah. This is from honors geometry, so let's not do that. <laughs> well, I think I no... might actually have that page. Oh, really? Okay. I was going to say there's no point in taking problems from an honors geometry class. Um, I think they kind of mix some of the stuff that we do together. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with sure you. I have, I have seen it from both classes. Okay, we'll use your paper here. Uh, okay, would you like me to send a clear picture? Uh, I think I, as long as I can make out the numbers, I know what. Uh, I've been through this enough that I know what it says. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can make out the numbers. So. We need to first find the slope. Oh, this is actually a little different. It's not exactly the same as the honors. Okay, so we have all these points up here. Yeah. A through G. What's the slope of C, D? Um, so what do you need to do the slope formula? Okay. 
This is the thing you want to be good at, slope. If you want to be good at one thing only, make it slope. Because okay. you just cannot succeed at geometry or algebra without knowing what slope is and knowing how to get it. Okay? So point C is 3 comma minus 7. Okay. Point D is 4 comma minus 15. So the slope of CD, what's the definition of slope? Um, rise over run. That's a good one to memorize. Now what's the detailed definition? What's the rise equal to? Isn't it y sub squared over or com minus y? Not sub one. What that means is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Okay. This is y sub 2. This is y sub 1. The run is what? Um, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Make sure they go in the same direction. Okay. Because you can do it opposite if you do both of them opposite. But eh, I think that probably just going to confuse the issue. Let's just fill in yeah. numbers and what's y sub 2, in other words. So give me what I should write here. So y sub 2, so that would be negative 15 minus negative 7 over 4 minus 3. Okay. Good. Now what's the numerator equal to? So, 15 negative, would that be negative 8? Uh-huh. Okay. The denominator? Uh, 1. Okay. So, the slope of that line is minus 8. Okay. Question 2 is the slope of CE. See if we can do this one without me writing it down. Okay, so C E you get negative five minus negative seven and then six minus three. Okay. So negative two. Hold on. No, wait. No, that'd be two. Two five minus a minus seven over six minus three. Let's make sure we don't make a mistake. If we get one thing wrong, we're getting the answer wrong. Yeah. So we can't make a mistake in that numerator. What is that numerator? So that would be a positive two. Okay. Denominator is three. There's the slope of CE. Okay. okay. So each of these questions is going to ask about a slope between various points. You're going to do it exactly the same way every time. Okay. Now, depending on the name of the line, if they say CD, then my Y sub 2 and my X sub 2 are the D. But if they have said DC, if they say give me the slope of DC, well, my C is where the X sub 2's are. Yeah. But notice it doesn't matter. I can actually do Y sub 1 minus Y sub 2 as long as I do X sub 1 minus X sub 2. In other words, I can go either way. Just make sure your numerator and your denominator go the same way. Don't mix okay. them up. If you mix it up, you'll have the sign on your slope wrong. So I'm kind of reluctant to say that, but sometimes it's very helpful to go the other way. And I'll show you an example. Let's just, let me change these points for a moment and make this point 1 and make that point 5. Okay. So if I want to find the slope between these two points, 
If I do it the hard way, I got to go 5 minus 7 over 1 minus 3, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's nothing but negatives. Negative 2, negative 2, now I got to simplify that. It's actually far easier if I go x sub 1 or y sub 1 minus y sub 2. Let's go 7 minus 5 and make sure we go the same direction in the bottom. You know what I mean by that. In other words, don't mix it up and go 1 minus 3 in the bottom. Yeah. Okay, well this gives us 2 over 2. Same slope, just without all the negative signs. Yeah. So occasionally you'll find points where it's going to be much easier to go this minus this and this minus this than the other way around. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the same slope regardless. Just don't make the mistake of doing this minus this and then this minus that. Okay. That's the only mistake you can make. You can go either way, just be consistent. Okay. Thanks. So, how many more of these do we... Oh, no, they're not all the same. I thought they were all the same. Let's talk about midpoint. Okay. Midpoint between D and E. 4 and minus 15 is D. Mm -hmm. And E is 6 comma minus 5. Well, what we want is an x-coordinate that's halfway between these two x-coordinates and a y-coordinate that's halfway between the two y-coordinates. There's, okay. there's a couple ways to look at it. Let's look at a number line. Let's put the D point, that's 4, there's the x-coordinate of the E point. What's halfway between those two? Five. That's the x-coordinate of the midpoint. Okay. Okay. How did I get that? Um, you, you got it well. just by seeing that five would be halfway in between it. But notice <laughs> I can also get it by adding those two numbers and dividing by two. Okay. That's the best way to do it. That way you don't have to lay it out on a number line. So what's the y midpoint? Mm. Add them together, divide by 2. So 6 plus... No, y. Not the oh. 6. Yes. <laughs> uh, negative 5 plus 15 plus a negative 15. That would be negative 10? Yeah. Okay. In other words, the midpoint, there's no relationship between the x's and the y's. What you do is you find the midpoint of the x's, and then completely separately, you find the midpoint of the y's. And you find midpoint okay. by adding the two numbers and dividing by 2. In other words, you do the same thing to find the midsection of a trapezoid. If I know this side is 12 and this side's 36, how do I get the mid-segment? Um. Add the top and bottom together and divide by 2. Okay. And that mid-segment will be equidistant from the top base and the bottom base. As you can see, it's 12 away from each. But rather than doing any kind of uh, complicated visualizing, just add the two numbers and divide by 2. That always gives you a midpoint no matter what you're talking about. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So what's the midpoint of BC? the x-coordinate of the midpoint? Mm, B, C. So, negative 7. Uh, x-coordinate. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's a mistake you do not want to make, is mixing up your x and y coordinates. Okay. That, that will be very costly to you. So, that would be 1. No. 
No, why do we? Divide by two. So it would be point five. Yeah, one half. Okay. Okay. What's the y? So. What what is this between D and E? Oh, hold on. Are we doing uh, number three or four? No, we were doing four. The midpoint of BC, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's the y mm -hmm. part of the midpoint? So that would be negative two plus. No, that's the x coordinate. Um, I hope I don't do this on the test. I'll start. Um, just always remember, yeah. when you're looking at coordinate pairs, it's always x comma y. Okay. Just think of the okay. x always comes first, which is different than when you're talking about slope, because when you talk about slope, the y is on top. The change in the y over the change in the x. So okay. So it's a little bit confusing, but just remember that when you're looking at a coordinate, it's always x comma y. Okay. So what's the midpoint between the y's? So it would be negative 6.5? Correct. Okay, uh, let's look at number 5. We need the equation of line BG. B is okay. minus 2 minus 6. G is 3 comma 19. What's the most important part of an equation of a line? Um, the slope? Yep. You got it. Slope is huge. The reason it is, it, it, it all the way through calculus, it's huge. Okay. That's why they spend so much time in algebra and geometry talking to you about slope is because it turns out in all higher mathematics, slope is the key. That's the most important thing in the world. It's, okay. It's the rate of change that things happen. Okay, so the very first thing we, we need to do in order to figure out the equation of this line is to figure out what its slope is. So okay. the first thing is, what is the slope of BG? So the slope of B, G, so you do 19 minus negative 6. That's 25. Okay, and then you would have 3 minus negative 2, which would be 5, just 5. Okay, so and then you divide. The slope them. is 5. Okay. The general equation of a line. Okay. Y equals what? Y equals mx plus b. That's the general, okay? Okay. So we know slope. We know the five part, but we don't know b yet. Yeah. Well, let's write everything we know. How can I solve for b? So, I have two different points that are both on this line. Yeah. Pick any one of them and plug it in for X and Y. Okay, so negative 2 for X. Well, let's start from the left and work to the right. What's okay, so 19 for Y. And then 5x times... No, plug in the x value. You plugged in the y value. Also plug in the x value. Okay, so 3. Now notice okay. I can solve for b. It's the only unknown. In other words, okay. when you start from this point where you know the slope and you know one point, it doesn't matter which point. I could have plugged in this point also. But... We have two, two points to choose from. I really only need one. If you know slope and one point, you can figure out the equation of a line. So solve this for B. What do you get? So 15 and then 19. So would you sub 
subtract 15 from 19? So B equals 4. Okay. So now what's the equation of the line? Y equals M, I mean 5X plus 4. Correct. In other words, okay. you only plug in the point for X and Y in order to solve for B. Once you've solved for B, I know what slope is. Now I want to go back and I want to write the equation in terms of Y and X. So I, I always have a Y and an X in my final equation. But okay. I have to go through this step here and that step in order to solve for B. And that's the only thing I'm doing. And I, like I said, I could pick either point. I could have picked this point, in which case this down here would be what? Let's use this point instead. Okay. So negative 6 equals 5 times negative 2 plus b. And if you solve that, you will see that b also equals 4. Yeah. So either point works. Yeah. To solve for b. And that's, uh, this is a very fundamental thing for both algebra and geometry, is to be okay. able to write the equation of a line given two points. And what you need to do is figure out the slope first, and then use one of the points to figure out the b. So we're basically solving for that and that, and then we're, once we solve for them, we're going to put it back into the equation and give it back like that. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Let's hope there's at least one more uh, equation of the line. <laughs> All right, that's all right. Um, number six says, which equation is perpendicular to that last line? In other words, mm -hmm. there's the equation of BG, 5x plus 4, right? Which of these three equations is perpendicular to that line? You don't have much to go on. Um, yeah. Can you see these okay? Can you read them, or do you need me to blow them up a little bit? Um, it's okay. I have the paper in front of me. So. Oh, good. I was, I was, I couldn't remember whether this was one of yours or, or mine. So which, if this is the equation of BG, what's true about a line that's perpendicular to that? What kind of slope is it going to have? Um. you got to do two things to get the perpendicular slope. Okay. Two things are they. Well, you have to solve for it. Well, it's real mm -hmm. simple. You take the slope and you take the reciprocal of it and you change its sign. Okay. Those are the two things. Always you have to do both. So if my slope is 5, what is the slope of the perpendicular? So if your slope is 5, then the slope of the perpendicular. Reciprocate first and then change the sign. What's the reciprocal of 5? Um... One. No. <coughs> it's five is really five over one, right? Yeah. What's the so reciprocal of five over one? One over five. Correct. That's the okay. reciprocal. So that's step one. And then change the sign. That's step two. Okay. So that is going to be the slope of any line that is perpendicular to that line. So if we look at our problem, they say, which 
equation is perpendicular to our BG line, which one is it? Um, would it be A? No, that has a slope of one-fifth. What are we looking for? Negative one-fifth, so it would be B. Correct. Okay. Parallel. Parallel means what about slope? Um, that they're the same. They're equal to each other? They're the same. Okay. All parallel lines have the same slope. In other words, if I drew a parallel line, if I had a line there and I draw a parallel line, it's got the same slope, right? It doesn't matter how I draw the first line. I could draw it like that. If I draw a parallel line, they have the same slope. So parallel lines always have the same slope. Okay, so to answer question seven, which answer... Is it? Mm, okay. Um, it would be. Remember our our BG equation is y equal five x plus four. Okay. So it would have to be negative four, right? No, it has. We're only talking slope. Okay. Slope is the only thing that matters to these two questions. In other words, to answer number six, I didn't pay any attention to that negative four, that negative two, or that plus one. That was not a factor. Is all okay. I'm looking for is an M that is minus one fifth. Well, there's my M that's minus one fifth. Mm -hmm. That's the answer, regardless of what that number is. Okay, same thing okay. about number seven, is all I'm looking for is a slope that is the same as this slope over here. Excuse me one second. I got her, she signed, she signed up for tomorrow at 7.30 on Wednesday. Well, that's okay because I didn't have any openings today. I was booked solid from 2 o'clock on. Tomorrow? No, I'm in a session right now and I got another one coming up for an hour and a half. Uh, okay, that's all right. These are my three busiest days of the year. Um, but she's down, she's scheduled for 7.30 my time tomorrow night, which will be 9.30 her time. What time is her test tomorrow? Okay. All right. Well, I'll let you guys figure it out, and you can get back to me. Okay. Do you want me to cancel her session for tomorrow night? Or you want me to leave it there? Hello? Hello? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what happened. I lost the call. I apologize, terrible. Kendall, are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Somebody thought they had a session tonight and they didn't. Um, it's okay. So... Where were we? Well, let's see. We're almost to the end of the session. Um, yeah. Mm, all right. Well, we're, we're really getting – this stuff is very meaty. By meaty, I mean this is the most important stuff of anything we've talked about. Okay. The slope, parallel slope, perpendicular slope, equations of a line. You need to be able to do these problems for sure. Okay. I also have a session with you tomorrow, so we can oh. go over the rest of this then. 
Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, you did all three of them. Okay, good. I, I yeah. feel bad. I feel like I've that's changed you a little bit here. I got to run mm -hmm. because it's eight, and I was late to begin with, so I apologize. Um, that's okay. But I will be back to you tomorrow at 3.30. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Kendall. Bye-bye.